Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Claire Bratton, and today we'll be discussing social development theories under Chapter 8. Share my screen. The social development perspective focuses on process of human development and understanding criminality. And uh, the focus is on the life course, you know, longitudinal studies to determine how, how an, an individual develops um, criminality over time. Key development tasks for adolescents are establishing identity, cultivating symbiotic relationships, defining physical attractiveness, investing in a value system, obtaining an education, separating from family and achieving independence, and obtaining and maintaining employment. So you can see that social development really looks at the life course, you know, the pathways of individuals. Now, now one, one um, example of social development perspective is the life course perspective. These theories show that criminal behavior tends to follow a distinct pattern across the life cycle. So crime during childhood is uncommon, and it actually begins in late adolescence or early adulthood. And for the adolescence limited offenders, criminality disappears by age 30 or 40. On the other hand, some people never or rarely commit crimes while others become career criminals, meaning they start offending, and their, their offending persists throughout their life course, meaning they never desist from crime. So life course perspective moves the focus away from reasons why people become offenders. Instead, the focus is on questions about offending over the life course. And the emphasis is on the study of criminal careers, or the longitudinal sequence of crimes committed by an individual offender. Now, we need to know these concepts, which are frequently discussed in life course perspectives and theories. First, participation. What is participation? This is the percentage of population that is criminally active. Frequency. This is the number of crimes committed by individuals over a uh, per unit of time. So how long do they commit crimes, for example, in a month, in a week? Duration is the length of criminal career. It can be as short as a week or as long as, you know, 20 years. Seriousness refers to the fact that some offenders may commit only petty crimes, others may commit serious crimes, while still others may commit a mix of petty and serious crimes. So researchers evaluate the prevalence, frequency, and onset of offending. They also identify trajectories or developmental pathways to delinquency. Now, what are trajectories? These are long-term patterns and sequences of behavior. On the other hand, transitions are specific life events embedded in a trajectory. For example, me, I have a trajectory that started when I was born, and then it, you know, throughout my life up until this point today, that's a whole trajectory of my life. But there are specific transitions, meaning a meaningful events in my life trajectory that had an impact on me. For example, when I got married, and then um, when I when I get got pregnant, that's also a transition for me. When I moved um, to a different country, when I started work, these are specific transitions that have an impact on my life trajectory. Now, there are key dynamic concepts that we also need to learn. First activation. This includes the start, you know, the start of your criminal career, acceleration. Um, it means like the increase in the level of seriousness over your of your criminal offending, stabilization, and then diversification, which basically means that you choose to commit different types of crimes as opposed to only one type of crime. Aggravation refers to the, th the increase in seriousness of your criminal offending from petty offenses to more serious offenses. Desistance includes deceleration, specialization, and escalation. So when we, say, when we say desistance, it basically means that we stop committing crime, right? But in the context of life course perspective, it includes not just the complete cessation of criminal activity, but also deceleration, which means that 
the frequency with which you commit crime slows down or specialization. So if you specialize in a crime before you diversified into different types of crimes, such as robbery, burglary, theft, and then if you specialize in one type of crime, meaning theft, it's also a sign of desistance. And then the escalation, this refers to the decrease in this level of seriousness of the offenses that you commit. For example, before you would commit robbery, and then it de-escalates, de now you commit only simple or petty theft. So, Lobin Sampson's age-graded theory found that delinquent children frequently had trouble at school and home, and they also had friends already involved in delinquency. Two specific life events or transitions reduce the frequency of offending in later life. First, marriage, and then second, job stability. They also found that delinquency is more likely to, to occur when bonds to society are weak or broken. So social ties within the adult transitions explains variation in crime, which is not accounted for by childhood deviance. So what exactly are these turning points? What are these ex life experiences that can change criminal behavior? What are these, turn, um, these situations, experiences that turn people away from crime? The examples would be employment and marriage. So Lobb and Samson are saying that once a person, you know, once a person is able to get a job or gets married, then at that point in his or her life, he or she may decide to stop criminal activity because of the need to have a more stable work environment, a more stable life to provide for family, or because maybe there are other factors that may um, cause him to desist from crime, such as the need to maintain a stable work or a stable employment. Now, what is social capital? This is the degree of positive relationships that individuals build over the course of their lives. So social capital, what exactly is it? It means like, you know, um, whether or not you cultivate uh, positive relationships with your family, with your students, with your co-students, co your peers, and your co-workers. So the greater social capital means that you have less chances of committing crime. Now, Moffitt is popular because of his dual taxonomic theory. So he has two types of offenders when, when it comes to criminality. And it also explains why most antisocial or delinquent children do not become adult criminals, okay? So the first type of offender is the life course persisters. These are per offenders who commit crime at a certain age and persist throughout their, li their life course. So they never stop offending. And for them, the reason why they commit crime is because of neurological deficits combined with poverty and family dysfunction, okay? Other causes would be failure in school and early development in delinquency. So life course persisters, they never stop offending. On the other hand, for MOFIT, Adolescents limited offenders are led into offending by structural disadvantages or the maturity gap. So the you know because of status anxiety, from, because of the resulting from the transition from adolescence to adulthood, they're pulled into offending because of mimicry, social mimicry. Um, let me give you an example. So most you know most teens at some point in their life, 16, 17, they feel like they feel like they're already adults. But at the same time, society treats them as juveniles, youths. They, they're still, still treated as children. So what they do is they mimic, you know, they, they see that some of their friends um, who, are, who act more adult and who, who are more free are, are more delinquent, engage in a life of crime. So they mimic this. They mimic some of their peers, some of their friends who they seem, who are, who seem to be unable who seem to be able to um, act without the constraints of childhood. And because of this mimicry and desire, desire for autonomy, they engage in antisocial behavior. But as the term suggests, their antisocial behavior or delinquency is limited to the adolescent years. So they age out of it as soon as society treats them as adults also. So the minute they become 21 years old, for example, they start to think, okay, um. I, I should act like an adult right now and um, get a stable job, maybe go join the military and you know, raise a family. So they abandon delinquency as they mature. 
Now, uh, for Farrington's delinquency development theory, I just want you to know uh, that there are two types of desistance. An aided desistance occurs without formal intervention. For example, if you yourself decide to not commit crime anymore, that's an aided desistance. Aided desistance involves the juvenile justice system. For example, if you're arrested, okay, obviously you, you desist because you're incarcerated. Now, Lubert and LeBlanc's components of the system include deceleration, specialization, de-escalation, and reaching a ceiling. Then uh, for social development theories, I want you to look at these development pathways. So there are three development pathways to disruptive behavior and delinquency. The first pathway is the overt pathway. So it starts with minor aggression, okay, during early adolescence, and then such as bullying and annoying others. And then you transform into physical fighting, such as personal fighting and gang fighting. And later, the more serious, the most serious level of overt pathways is when you engage in violence, such as rape, attack, strong arm, and strong arm robbery. Now, the second pathway would be the authority conflict pathway. And this happens before the age of 12. It starts with stubborn behavior, and then it transitions to defiance and disobedience. And third, it leads to authority avoidance, such as truancy, running away, and staying out late. Finally, the covert, covert pathway starts off with minor covert behavior, such as shoplifting, frequent lying, and then it leads to property damage, such as vandalism and fire setting, and then finally, it leads to moderate to serious delinquency, such as fraud, burglary, and serious theft. So I will let you read the rest of the slides. And um, this wraps up our discussion on so social development theories. I hope you learned a lot. And I'll see you in our next class meeting.